Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. What will they think? It's a question I've received frequently over the last several weeks from friends and family, colleagues and clients. Michael, what will they think if I post that? Ask for more money, write my book, publish my book, share what I need out of my relationships. What will they think? What should I do? Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. Usually the answers to those questions are found within us. But I do know this, the only way to find out is to go through the resistance. So often we MSU things, we make stories up, we make stuff up about how others will view our art, our ripple. And then when our inner critic gets activated and the resistance gets more powerful, we hold back. And I can totally appreciate where they're at because I've dealt with the resistance in my career, in my life, even current day, heck, even a little bit before we launched the Kintsugi podcast. What will people think of this? Will they like it? I don't know. Maybe they won't like it. So maybe I shouldn't do it. And the story goes on and on and on. And we hold back and we never put our beauty out there. We don't put our voice out there because the resistance in that case wins. But I do know this, that if we can find a way through, then maybe just maybe they will view you as courageous and valuable and inspiring and confident just to name a few awesome sauce qualities they may see in you. I receive Richard Rohr's blog each day. This one, this passage comes from Falling Upwards. Now his blog is religious in nature, and I'm not really a religious guy, more spiritual, but I do believe we can glean a lot of great lessons from world religions. And this passage from Falling Upwards, I just love. It goes like this, life as the biblical tradition makes clear is both loss and renewal, death and resurrection, chaos and healing at the same time. Life seems to be a collision of opposites. And that's the paradox that we have to hold space for the chaos, like this moment in time in 2020, and the growth that can come out of it. We get to decide how we wish to tune in and show up for the world. We get to choose our labels because after all, every event in our life is neutral until we label it. That's why I view COVID this year as happening for us, not to us. Just like my accident, I believe, happened for me, not to me. That part of life, the paradox of life, It has some tension. We talked about this in a previous conversation about resilience on the Kintsugi podcast, this Japanese term phrase called mano no aware basically speaks to the transient nature of life. It goes on to share that life is precious and beautiful because and only because it doesn't last forever. There's an end to it. I also think life is beauty or beautiful because there is tension. When you think about it, what what would life be without tension? Would it keep your pilot light burning? Would you still see it as the gift that it is? And even after saying that, I know that in this moment in time known as 2020, I think everybody, including me, would love less tension. We're a few weeks away from the election and it's really tense. Here in the States, our backpacks weigh so much heavier today than they did, say, in February. We know that our mental and emotional health is, well, suffering because of all the tension. But to live is to dance with the resistance, to dance with some uncertainty, with some tension. I believe it's what gives us the adrenaline to get through what we need to get through. I think Robert Frost said, the only way through is through. So we need a little mojo to get through it. And I think one of the best ways to get through something is love. All this month, we are examining resistance in our leadership academy. We're doing things that scare us, sort of in spirit of Halloween here in the States. So we're trying to do big things that make our, you know, our backs sweat a little bit, our palms get sweaty. 
And when I feel the resistance, I go back to a book that I just love. I first found it through Seth Godin's Alt-MBA. It's The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And I love what Stephen writes about resistance and love. In fact, um, this is really cool. I get to interview him in a few days, and I'll bring that interview to you on a future Consume You podcast. But this is what his passage says about resistance and love. Resistance is directly proportional to love. If you're feeling massive resistance, the good news is, is that there's tremendous love there too. If you didn't love the project that's terrifying you, you wouldn't feel anything. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. Just love that. And before I found the book, I had to tap into love to get through some moments in time. I didn't know it at that time. But when I look back on my life, then I, I use love a lot to get past the things that really scared me. And two examples I want to share with you today. One is all about my memoir. So I wrote my memoir back, like started like 2016, 17. So many people said, Michael, you got to write your book, got to write your book. When I left corporate America and started my coaching practice, they said it would be great for speaking, great for your career, all that jazz, but I, I just wasn't into it. When you write your memoir, that is, that is one naked journey. You put that out there and people don't like it. What does that say about you? I realize it probably says more about them than you. But at the time, I was in my head. I came up with so many reasons not to write it, including, well, I suffer from post-traumatic seventh grade English disorder. I didn't fancy myself as a writer. And the resistance was powerful. Again, I made up a whole bunch of reasons why I shouldn't write the book. But as you probably know, I wrote the book. Because the story shift, Creating Better Tomorrows, is about love of life, the love of overcoming challenges, the love for those in your peloton, for those who have read it. And if you have read it, first of all, thank you very much. But you know, it's a love letter to the head of my peloton, my wife, because in my humble opinion, she puts awesome into awesome sauce. Now, two years ago, I also had to tap into love because resistance paid me another visit. I joined the Healthcare Business Women's Association back in 2003. It's a nonprofit dedicated for dedicated to gender parity and female advocacy, female leadership opportunities within healthcare. I believe we need more female leaders throughout organizations because women tend to be the chief medical officers in their home. And if we don't have women in every single conference room in the executive suite, then we're missing the voice of most healthcare decisions. So I joined back in 2003. I joined two because I'm a father of two daughters and I wanted to change the world for them. And I've been a volunteer for them since 2014. Well, in 2018, right around this time, I was asked to head up the New York chapter and I hesitated. The resistance was paying me another visit. An old boss would say, hey, Michael, you're to and fro and too much. You got to make up your mind. You got to get through it. You got to make a decision. Well, the thing is, Back then, if I said yes, and eventually I said yes, but there was a lot riding on it because by saying yes, I would be the first male chapter president in their 42-year history. And I knew not everyone was psyched about a male in that role. After all, it's called the Healthcare Business Women's Association. Would I be taking a role away from a female leader? I was nervous about what people would say, if they would like me or not. Because when my inner dialogue gets going, the unhealthy version of it, the inner critic, the gremlin, however you want to phrase it, it's all about not being liked or being valued or not being included, all that jazz. Well, eventually I accepted it because of love. You see, when my daughters were born, I promised them, promised myself I would change the world for them. A daunting task indeed. But I wanted them to have every opportunity to succeed as any boy born on their birthday, who, you know, if you're a boy, most likely you're born in the red zone. You have a easier chance to score. So I wanted to give them every opportunity to score, to succeed. So out of love for my daughters, I decided to accept the role because it would help me honor the commitment that I would start changing the world for them. And I'm so glad I did. It's been a great two-year run. And next year, I will serve on their global board as a non-voting director, which is really cool. It gets, gets, a role gets into strategy and all that jazz. That's for another time. But when I think about 
this moment in time, as I know you do, 2020, we are feeling a lot of resistance. There is a lot of tension. And I know, again, as I mentioned earlier, we all would love a little bit less of it. But I know this. If we deny it, we kick it down the road or avoid it or repress it, it ain't going to go away. I'm also confident about this, that fear ain't going to help us out. And marketers love to peddle fear. Politicians do as well. I don't think fear is going to win. Fear, fear is only going to divide us. You know, it's going to give more power to the resistance. So as we look at the end of 2020, we have to decide how we're going to go forward into 2021. And I think we need more love. There's definitely love out there, but we need more of it to get over or through or past the resistance. And that includes love for the people that we don't necessarily agree with. And I know that's not popular because there's a lot of, whew, there's a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of addiction to being right. We are more divided than ever before, but we have, I think, much more in common than what divides us. So staying in the hate probably only is going to give us more hate. Staying in the judgment is only going to yield more judgment. It won't help us move forward and we need to move forward because I'm not sure about you, but I imagine you also want to get past all this chaos and start doing things that can create a better tomorrow. So you might see resistance at your company, your company's inability to change. Maybe it's within your community. Maybe you see it, your scope is so large as the whole world, like I wanted to change the world for my girls. Or maybe you just have some resistance within you. Wherever it may be, here's the thing. I believe if you can tap in to love, which ties back to your why, if you will, your overall purpose, you make it about others. It can help you get past that resistance. It can also help you let go of some of the things of old so you can create some space to grow. Sort of like the trees and their leaves, as I mentioned last week on the Consuming Podcast. So I hope this week, after listening, after joining us here today, is that you'll spread a little bit more love around. Because golly, we, we need it. We need it to get past the resistance that's holding us back. It's preventing us from growing in the way that we need to grow. So there's a couple of different things I want to just reference at the end here, uh, just give you a heads up. There are two things that tie back to love and tie back to resistance. I've been asked by a lot of people this year, because I celebrated six years as an entrepreneur, leaving my corporate life at the age of 47 with two daughters rapidly approaching college. People have asked me, like, how, how did you do it? Because I've done it all through a, or in a spare bedroom <laughs> that I now call my office. It's not luxurious at all. So I've put together a series. I will be doing a video a week through the end of 2020, really profiling, giving you all the behind the scenes stuff of how I move from corporate life, executive life into coaching. I know there's a whole bunch of courses out there, 997 this, 797 this, 1799. I'm giving this away for free because I believe the world needs better coaches, especially now. And so those courses, and I took a whole bunch of them in the beginning, and I found out that I spent a lot of money, but I didn't get anything out of it. So I'm going to give you the behind the scenes, the things I did well, the things I didn't do well. I'm going to sort of open my practice up in hopes that you can take a pearl or two away to help you establish your coaching practice. If you are thinking about or are in the process of making a move from corporate into coaching. So you can find it on my YouTube channel, Michael O'Brien Peloton Coaching. The playlist is called Corporate From Corporate to Coaching. So I hope you'll check it out, especially if you're into this topic. So it's a love project, right? I'm not charging anyone anything for it. It's purely out of love because I think the world needs more coaches right now and we need better coaches. And then finally, the PBR shirt, Pause, Breathe and Reflect. It's on my website, which is michaelobrianshift.com. My friends have said, it feels like a hug when I put it on. Three important messages for this moment in time. One, to slow down, to pause, breathe, and reflect, to be mindful, thoughtful. On the back, it's a question, who's in your Peloton? Because we need to have the right people around us. We need that community. And there is a special message printed inside the shirt. And that's what blows people away. They're like, oh my God, the inside is remarkable. It's so cool. 
And that message is all about resilience. So I hope you'll um, pick up a shirt. We're going to come out with some new colors, some hats here in a week or two, but it's a shirt for the moment. It's a shirt that's all about love. And when you wear it, it can help remind you to get past the resistance because we need you to get past your resistance because I know you have something wonderful to share that will change the world. Maybe it will change you, change your family, start changing your community. But when we show up that way, there's this beautiful ripple and that that energy does change the world over time. So I hope you'll share. So I hope you check out either from coaching, from corporate to coaching or our PBR shirts and get your PBR on your pause, breathe and reflect. So if you have a question about almost anything about this episode or other conversations about resilience, head over to kintsugipodcast.com, leave your question there and I will answer it for you. You can also check out the Paceline Leadership Academy. That's our academy for corporate leaders in the middle and coaches looking to make more of a difference in the world. To have a great career, have a great life, but to be wealthy starting from the inside out. So I hope you'll check it out. My main website is michaelobrienshift.com. Thank you for listening to the Kintsuki Podcast, leaving a comment and subscribing. I couldn't do this without you. The reason I get past my resistance is you. Because I hope each week we come into your phone or your computer and it's just a, a gem or a little morsel of goodness, of good energy that can help you get through the week. So until next week, I hope you have fun storming the castle. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.